information network of paper. So uh, as, as you see yesterday and today, the kind of the speakers all about, uh, talk about the social network. Uh, so what, what we do here, so we don't have a um, kind of new model for social network. Instead, we try to recycle the traditional model, but add some new element, a new feature of our information, of our, our network feature. Uh, it's more like you think about the a node on a network and you why people want to share information. So we want to, uh, we don't have a rich network structure, but we want to go deeper to uh, study the incentives for people to share information. Right? And so that, that's kind of uh, how we try to position the paper. Uh, so I'm going to give you some motivations. Um, uh, I'm going to give you two motivating examples. The so first example, sort of very closely related to our match our theoretical model. Uh, the, the second example, uh, kind of the, the match, we need to do some variation of the model, but the general flavor is the same. Uh, so you, you can see the paper to, to try to see to who will get what kind of information. So that, that's kind of the basic um, kind of theme. So why, what basically people, why share information, what is, kind of who will share information with the whom. So the first example is, uh, um, is the investor conference. Uh, so they here you they, in this example, some institu institutional investors, so they get it together, they have a conference, and then they talk about, uh, so they are re research ideas, the investment ideas. And um, uh, so what we ask is kind of why people want to share information. Uh, so kind of a cheap answer is they want to uh, network. They kind of try to uh, exchange information, but we want to ask why. So who will share information with whom? We kind of want to study their incentives. And so if they share information, what will be the consequences for their profit and for the financial market in general? It turns out the results are very, very surprising to at least to theory people or to, uh, to, to us. And so the, the first one reason is the first surprising result is when you think about who share information with whom, so probably your prior is the information we will share from more informed people to less informed people. Uh, but actually this is the, the, what we found is the opposite. So what we found, if you think about that two investors, one is H, the other one is L. H means an investor who has a high, who, who the information precision or who the information quality is high. The L is the investor who the information quality is low. So we, we show that in equilibrium, actually invest, information flies from, uh, flows from L to H, not from H to L. So that so you, if you allow them to share information, actually information fl um, kind of uh, shared from L to H. Uh, so that, that's the first surprising result. The second surprising result uh, is uh, if from a partial equilibrium perspective, the more information you have, you know, the more profit you will, you will generate. Uh, so, but this again is not what we found in the in the model. Actually, what we found is a profit of H from the investor who are the information receiver who get the information from L actually is become lower, and the L investor uh, her profit will become higher. So the information giver actually will benefit from sharing information. The information receiver actually will be harmed. Uh, so th this is due to the general equipment effect because when you after the information sharing, the financial market will also adjust such that this perverse result will, uh, will uh, show up. So that's the, the second surprising result that we, we found. Uh, so number three, uh, if you think about uh, the each investor's uh, uh, result, each investor profit become lower, so maybe uh, each investor want to uh, see. Okay, if, if, I I don't want to listen. If even if you tell me information, if I don't listen to your information, so that 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 can actually will make me better off. Uh, so that that's, that will be true if you only have one H investor, and we show that suppose you have multiple H investors and multiple L investors. Uh, so it turns out that that's a present dilemma. So all H investors, even if you gave them the 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 choice to not to listen. Uh, to L investor information because you have a lot of H investors, so it turns out that all of them will be stuck in a present dilemma equilibrium. So all of them will listen, will choose to listen, and all of them will become worse off. Uh, so that's the kind of the third result we, we found kind of very surprising. Um, so that, that's basically what we found. If you, you come back to this setting, this is the investor conference setting, so our model can, can somehow tell you so who will uh, be the speakers kind of on the podium, who will be in the audience. So, so according to our model, 
So those investors who are on the podium, actually they are relatively less informed. The people who are in the audience are probably kind of more informed. Uh, so that, 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 that's kind of counterintuitive. Uh, also after information sharing, those people, those speakers, I know they will become uh, better off. So these listeners, the audience will become worse off. Uh, so that, that, that's a, the prediction about this investor conference. So we, we try to model this in our baseline model. And then we also have another motivation, uh, kind of generally speaking, it's also social investing. Uh, so here it's a kind of uh, investor, either an institutional investor or retail investor, they talk about their research ideas or research performance in general public. So they typically in the social media room. Uh, so th this one is, uh, is about an uh, activist uh, uh, hedge fund investor. So he is talking about his uh, investment strategy on Apple, how much money he has kind of generated uh, in Twitter. And uh, he has some followers. Uh, there, are a lot, there are a lot of kind of potential explanations. Like today, last week, gave some explanations for this kind of investing. Uh, and also probably you can think about those people just to try to brag out. They can derive utility from kind of bragging and just to show, show off. And it's more like a behavior, like the, the idea uh, talked about uh, David the day, uh, yesterday. So like a transmission bias, the people only talk about the positive things. If they, they make a loss, they will not talk. Uh, so that, that's kind of, you have a lot of different kind of ideas. We just provide another perspective. So, so we kind of more rational, people uh, sort of they tell information uh, um, for rational reasons that want to make themselves better. So generate more profits. Uh, that, that's another kind of argument. Then th this is a, a kind of another example. It's a kind of retail investor, uh, similar to games, uh, GameStop example. Some retail investors is kind of in the GameStop example, so those people talk in, in Reddit. So this example, the, those uh, retail investors talk about their research ideas in stock kit similar kind of um, media uh, platform. So this kind of the broader motivation and what we do. So the broadly speaking, so we try to study social investing, so why people share information, so who will share information with whom, and uh, what will be the consequences for profits and the financial market. And that, that, I think I, I already talked about this uh, kind of surprising result. So, in terms of the information sharing, the information will flow from less informed people to more informed people. I also talk about the profit and the, the sender actually will become better off, the receivers will become worse off. I, I didn't talk about the kind of, you know, the market consequences because the market consequences are relatively kind of more intuitive, straightforward. So after the information sharing, price efficiency will become higher and the market liquidity will become lower because we have more private information, so more adverse selection problem. So market liquidity will become lower and the trading volume will also become higher because you have the information sharing. So those L and H people will trade against each other. That's kind of our key driver uh, mechanism of our results. And then we, we do some extensions. So that's the, so what we have done. And in, in terms of uh, in, uh, time, I'm going to move on directly to the model. So as I said, so we, we don't have a very fancy model. So what we do is we, we try to recycle the traditional models and add some uh, information sharing uh, flavor to the traditional models. So the traditional model we, we use is a Kyle model, the trading model, kind of the benchmark model in microstructure or in trading game. Uh, if you think about a Kyle model, uh, so the data one and the data two, that's a standard Kai model. So here in data one and data two, we have a informed, two informed people, uh, H and L. Uh, so they will, uh, those people have information, they will trade, uh, they will make a profit. So they will get a profit. But there are also some knowledge traders, the knowledge traders, we call them use knowledge traders. So those people, they will trade for uh, non-informational reasons, either for uh, hedging or for wrong beliefs, uh, so those people will lose money in, in equilibrium. And then also market makers. And uh, the market makers uh, basically is a reduced form for uninformed people. So you can, the more like a uh, weak efficiency rule. So you, those people will see the average order flow and the set of price equal to its own conditional value. That's a, that's kind of a reduced form. So those people will uh, make a zero profit in equilibrium. Um, uh, so that's uh, the, uh, you can, that, that's the representation for, for market basically. So in equilibrium, basically, H, uh, informed people make a profit, not the trader will lose money, 
and uh, market makers will uh, break even. The new element is on data zero. Uh, so my pain is not working. Uh, so it's on, on data zero, uh, so it's here, on data zero. So lo lots of people, uh, what they do is H and L on data zero, they will share information. So H will, uh, and, and L, they, uh, they will choose how much information they will share with each other. And after they share information, in that they will move. They will move to the traditional tile model. So that, that's basically the, um, the the setting. So now let, let's move on to the uh, kind of the specifics. So we have a um, kind of we have a risky asset. So that's a um, standard. So just follow normal distribution with mean zero and and uh, variance one. So as I said, that two uh, informed investor H and L. H will see the fundamental value perfectly, so he's more informed. So later on, we will relax the model to allow them to see uh, noise signals. L investor will see information plus noise. Uh, so the, the L investor's precision is given by Rho, and the information sharing is, is modeled by uh, and signal. So H investor will give L investor his information V plus uh, error. So the error has a precision to H, uh, so L investor will share information, hate information plus error. So the error uh, has a um, precedent to L. So to so basically commit to this linear sharing rule, and then they will choose to H and to L. Uh, so in the model, we, we allow to H and to L take any value between zero and infinity. And then um, if you, you like, you can just assume it's either zero or infinity. So as zero means no information sharing, infinity means to share everything. But in the model, we allow them to be and the value between zero and the infinity. So, and the investors will place their order flows to maximize the, uh, their profit. And uh, so this is um, kind of profit and the information is, uh, H is, uh, has a, this is private information and uh, they are sharing information. And in order to be given by you, market maker is standard at the time model. This is every the order flow and the set of flash. So that, that's kind of the, the, the base, the, 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 the specifics of the setting. And I have some interpretation how to interpret this uh, information sharing. And basically that's, uh, you can think about each investor has some data points and the data points will convey information about the fundamental value and the information sharing can be understood as the sharing data set. The more, the larger data sets they will share, the more uh, kind of information they are giving up. Uh, so now let, let me talk about the key mechanism. So that, that's the, 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 the mechanism of driving everything. So that's the result, uh, the key result. So each investor, they will trade on their signals. So each investor trade on her information V and also the shared signal SH and SL. And L investor also trade on her information Y and also shared information SH and SL. So all those up and the beta will be endogenous. Uh, so and uh, the, the key observation here is this alpha L is negative. So the, that that's uh, that, that's what's driving the, the result. We call it uh, uh, as a treating against the error effect. Uh, so to, to why, why that's the key, uh, why this H investor treating against this uh, information shared by L investor? Because if you think about H investor, the information set actually she knows the fundamental value of it. So the information shared by L is no use uh, of no use for each investor to predict the fundamental value. So this is information shared by L only useful for each investor to predict the market, the market price. So that, that's the uh, kind of the, uh, the, 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 the point of getting that information. And also each investor knows that H, L investor is stupid because his information, L investor information has a noise. You can think about that's the fundamental value of V plus some error. So H knows uh, L will somehow overshoot, will treat it uh, on, wrong, on wrong information, on this error. So when L treat on error, E, this, uh, this error, H actually wants to do the opposite because he knows L is stupid, is treating on this error. I want to back out of this error so that I treat against that error. So how, how to back out of that error? Because because H investor knows the way, if L shares share very with H investor, so this very minus V is this error. So basically, you can think about this is uh, the information shared by L to H is sort of a noise. 
So when, when you tell me something, I use my own more precise information to back out your noise, I treat against that. So that's why this alpha L is, um, is kind of negative because this H is more superior uh, to uh, L in terms of the information, fundamental information. So H will treat against L. So that, that, that's why it explains why this alpha L is negative. So it turns out that this negative sign is what L wants. So that's actually that's beneficial to L. Uh, so, so why that's the case? So L knows that I'm relatively stupid, than, more stupid than H. I know that, I know that H will take advantage of me, but that's okay. So I, I, I will take advantage of more stupid people, which are not the traders. Uh, because when L trade, uh, so when L trade, uh, market makers will, will see the order flows. If uh, market makers make adjustment based on all the, all the flows, so that will make L investors' uh, information advantage very, very low. So suppose uh, uh, L has some good news, want to buy, and when he buy, market makers will detect that, and the market maker will adjust the price up, and that will be very bad for, uh, for, 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 for L investors. So now suppose the L investor buy, H investor is selling. So that will provide a cover. So that can better protect the L investor. So, the, so that the market maker cannot detect the L investor the order flow. So it's more like the H investor is providing a, a cover to hide, to help hide the L investor from a market maker. So that, that's how L investor can make a profit from knowledge traders because the market maker is less responsive. So market makers will be less responsive to, to L investors the order flow. So when the L investor see some good news, L investor buy, and each investor know L investor has some noise, will treat against that, will sell, and the market maker cannot see any change in response to L investor information. As a result, the market maker cannot detect the information from L. So market maker will not respond by changing the price. L investor can, can treat more secretly as a result, they can make more profit from knowledge traders. So that, that's kind of a logic, uh, e economic logic. And then we show that formally. Uh, so what, what we do basically, we, we look at the profit and then we try to take the derivative. And so to, 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 to see so what, what will be the, 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 the fine of the derivative. So there will be four effects in this derivative. So if you, if our investors share more information, uh, so that will change the uh, kind of the market makers, lambda, and also some some other kind of effects. But uh, but the, the the key is here is there are four effects, but only that treat against the error effect is positive. All the other three effects will be negative. And it turns out that this positive effect is so strong that it will dominate. Overall effect is positive. So the first other condition mathematically is always positive. As a result, the L investor always wants to share everything with H investor. So that, that's a mathematical proof. So for H investor, that, that's, a, that's the opposite because H investor, it has more information than L investor. So when H investor share information with L, L will treat that information very, 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 very uh, kind of precise information, very treat on that. And it, okay, but, but we are not treated against H investor. So the original intuition, the mechanism will, will disappear. So that will make an H investor kind of the, the, the sign is the first of the derivative is a negative. So H investor will not share information. Ian, you have two uh, to three minutes. I only have three minutes. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I think I already conveyed the main intuition. And, the, uh, and then we show that in equilibrium, uh, so we look at the benchmark. In the benchmark, we, we don't allow information sharing. So H investor, L investor, no information sharing. That's a basic Kyle model. And we can show that L investor uh, profit actually become higher. H investor profit become lower. So here, I think it's, uh, I, I want to explain more because this is result also very counterintuitive. So why that's the case? Let's look at my example. Suppose L investor, the information preceded the giving by Y, not the treating the giving by Y. So after the information sharing, as L investor's profit will increase by 30%, L H investor's profit will drop by 4%, overall their profit will become higher. So, so what, what's driving this result? Uh, this, this is because the market equilibrium will change. So after the information sharing, 
H and L, both of them have more private uh, uh, pre private um, information. So a market maker knows, okay, now H investor is more informed, I'm facing more adverse selection problem. So market maker overall will make the price schedule more uh, steeper. So meaning the market is less liquid overall. It's less liquid overall because uh, uh, H investor accounts a larger share in the market in terms of the profit. So this uh, um, uh, worsening market environment is will harm uh, H investor more. So the H investor, the profit will drop by 4%. Uh, but the L investor, as, as I explained before, because L, although the overall, overall worsening market liquidity also harms uh, L investor, but the L investor hey, can benefit from the cover provided by H investor. So that part of your benefit uh, L investor. So L investor will treat more aggressively and L investor profit from uh, the cover, cover provided by H investor will be larger than the loss due to uh, worsening market liquidity. So L investor profit will become higher. Uh, so that, that result is driven by the worsening market liquidity basically. And we also show kind of market efficiency become higher because both investors have more uh, kind of information. And, uh, and if we do some extensions, so one extension is we allow those investors, both investors have no other signals. And we basically, if, uh, so this is the row one is the preceding of a, uh, first investor, row two is the information of the second investor. So if row one and row two are very close to each other, so in this 45 degree line, there's no information sharing. If they are very, very similar. Uh, so in this region, so row two is much higher than row one. So investor two is H investor. So in this case, uh, investor one will share information with investor two and then not the other way around. This is the result of kind of uh, robust. And if this is about multiple investors and uh, I, so we, we can show that that's a principal dilemma. Even if you allow H investor not to listen, we can show those people they choose to listen. And we also think about the multiple H and the multiple L. And I don't think I have, have time to cover the last one. The last one basically will allow information sharing to the, uh, to the market maker. And we also, that can speak to the second motivation example. And the result is basically also will go through. So now let me uh, conclude with what we do. So we try to think about the, the, why people want to share information in the financial market. And we think that the, the, the perspective is very, very kind of surprising. We, we think it's, it's new. Uh, so we, we found that the information will flow from L to H. And in equilibrium, the H investor actually will become worse off. L investor will become better off. Uh, so that, and, and we also talk about some implications for, uh, for market equality. Uh, so that, that's all my presentation. So thank you very much. Look forward to Thierry's discussion and the comments from all of you. Thanks. Thank you, Li Yan, for a great presentation. So the discussant is Thierry Foucault from uh, Hack Paris. So Thierry, the screen is yours. Okay, thanks a lot. Do, do you hear me? Yes, yes, perfect. Okay, yeah, great. Let me share my screen. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. So th thanks for inviting me to discuss this paper. It's uh, very interesting. Ah, let me go back, yeah, okay. Um, so I, I'm going to, to come back a little bit on the motivation and the main finding, and then I will provide some, uh, some comments and general remarks about the, the background of the paper. So, so one, one key motivation of the paper is the observation that uh, investors tend to share investment ideas in many ways, for instance, on social media, like uh, stock tweets, uh, seeking alpha, Twitter, Reddit, and so on and so forth. So these are examples of messages that I... Uh, uh, took from stock tweets two days ago. And so the people are discussing indeed, you know, investment opportunities and they are making you know, their thing, whether they are bearish or bullish about stocks. So it provides some sentiment information. And, and the key question, so that this has been, this has been mentioned already by at least two papers in this conference, the, the, the keynote speech by uh, David Hirschleifer yesterday and the, the keynote speech today by, uh, by Lasser. So I think it's important to understand exactly the nature of communication and information shared on those, uh, on those platforms. And I think a key question that was not discussed yesterday by David or, or Lasser, which is a very important one, is why would someone with fundamental information share this information in the first place uh, for free? 
that's something that that we are not used to in the type of model uh, that uh, Liang has been using, for instance, like the kind, the kind model. So that's essentially the question of the paper, and I think it's a very good, uh, very good question. We'd like to understand why people share information in the first place. So what is the framework which is used by, uh, by um, in, in the paper? Uh, it's Kai 1985 with two types of investors. So this is the most, if you wish, basic setup you can consider to, to address this question. So I like it, very simple in a sense. Uh, and you have two investors. Uh, and the main difference between the two investors is that they both have fundamental information, but not of the, the same precision. That's going to be key. There is some asymmetry in the precision of signals. Uh, so there is one guy which is called the coarsely informed investor. He has an imperfect signal about the payoff of the risky asset. And while well, the interpretation, this might be one of the guys posting on stock tweets, for instance. And there is another guy uh, which is called the insider in the model who has a more precise signal. And in the baseline model, the guy has, has perfect information, but that's not key. Really the important thing is that this guy, the insider, has more precise information than the first investor. Uh, and those guys can share information in the sense that each type of investor can send a noisy signal about their own signal. So this is a signal about signal to the other investors before trading takes place. Uh, and communication, it's important, is not observed by other market, market participants in the baseline model. So the model is solved in two steps. That's the lateral thing to do. First, you know, you assume some precision of the signals about signals, the precision with which people communicate about their signals. You solve for the equilibrium trading strategies uh, and prices uh, for fixed precision of signals about signals. And then, this is step two, you ask yourself, what is the optimal communication strategy in the sense, what is the optimal level of precision of communication uh, for the insider and the costly informed investor? Uh, so everything is very standard here. And, and the main result, which is very interesting and, and surprising, is that the costly informed investor always wants to fully disclose her information in the baseline model, while the insider does not. So it's a bang bang result. One guy wants to uh, choose, fully disclose his information. The guy with that inform, the other guy does not, does not want to share information. Uh, so what is the, what is the intuition? Uh, the intuition is the following, which is because the insider has more precise information, the baseline model perfect information, he can filter out the noise in the signal of the more, uh, of the less informed guy. And in particular, in the case in which the less informed guy communicates fully a, a, a signal, then the more informed guy can know exactly what is the level of noise in the signal of the less informed guy. And so that gives the possibility for the more informed guy to trade against the noise. That is, let's say I know because I'm perfectly informed that the value of the asset, the payoff of the asset is 100. And the less informed guy thinks it's 102 based on his fundamental information. Well, that gives me the possibility to trade against, you know, the, the, the error that the guy is making. The guy is overvaluing the stock by two. I'm going to, uh, to trade on that. Uh, this mechanism is not symmetric because um, communication of a signal by the insider is just going to invite more competition from the, from the, from the, from the less informed guy. Uh, so you have this nice result, which is that one guy wants to communicate, the other guy does not. And the other nice result, which is not obvious, is that the guy who communicates always make more profit in this thing. That's sort of intuitive because otherwise he would not. The less intuitive result is that the guy who received the message would be better off not listening to the message, a bit like Odysseus and the mermaids, but he cannot, he cannot commit, commit to that. So because he cannot commit not to listen uh, and that he would be better off, you know, because of that to deviate from a situation in which he would say, well, I'm not going to listen to you, uh, mm -hmm. then the insider is worse off in, uh, in equilibrium. And, and the reason is that, the reason is that the possibility for the less informed guy, for the, the fact that the more informed guy is going to trade against the noise in the signal of the less informed guy, 
that's going to give the possibility for the less informed guy to impact the market less. And so that's going to incentivize the less informed guys to trade even more aggressively on his fundamental information. And so that creates more competition between people with fundamental information. And the guy who is most informed does not, does not like that. So th that's, that's, that's a very nice intuition. And communication, when communication takes place in equilibrium, that's going to decrease liquidity, that's going to make the impact of trades uh, bigger, and that's going to improve price informativeness. And so those conclusions are robust in various extensions of the model. When the insider is not perfectly informed, it just, it just needs to be better informed. When you have multiple insiders and when it's possible for dealers to observe some, some information about the communication taking place between the less informed guy and the more informed guy. Okay, so, so what are my comments? Uh, well, I, I, I found the paper very well written. The economic mechanisms and the intuitions are, are very clear. The question is obviously uh, relevant and topical. Uh, and I particularly like the application of the model to understand information sharing and communication on, on social media. And my main comment here is that maybe you should develop even more this application. I think that there are ways to extend maybe the model to do that. Uh, so one suggestion is that something that I think you should stress more in the paper is that your mechanism requires the coarsely informed in investor to have some fundamental information. Uh, that is, there is a particular case in the model in which the coarsely informed in inform investor has no information at all. That is, the precision of first signal is, is zero. That's a particular case of the model. And in this case, communication has no value, if you wish. It may take place, but that does not change the equilibrium. So what this means is that it's necessary that the less informed guy has some fundamental information. Otherwise, nothing happens, essentially. And that's, that's not obvious. That's not obvious because when you look at the, the, when you look at the equilibrium, um, the trading strategy of the insider, the way the insider trades on the signal conveyed by the less informed guy about a signal does not depend you know, on whether the noise in this signal is the noise in the original signal of the guy with less informed or the noise that this guy has added to, to his signal. Those two noise terms, they enter additively in the training strategy. So initially I was a bit puzzled because I told myself, well, given that, even when the guy with less information has no fundamental information at all, the mechanism should work. And it does not, it does not. Uh, and I think it will be interesting to discuss a bit more why, what is exactly the intuition here. Uh, what this means is that for the mechanism to operate, it needs to be the case that the guy with less information, less fundamental information, less precise inform fundamental information, still has some information, which I think is an interesting observation because that means for the mechanism to work, it must be that people communicating on social media have some fundamental information. That's a prerequisite. Maybe very, very noisy, but the noise cannot be infinite. This is what that means. So, here, you know, I think that there are many people who think that, well, no, that's not going to work. There is no information you know, in the social media. That's just, that's just noise. And you can take many examples, you know, just to make this point, anecdotes like the one I, I put on my screen, which is there are many messages that, that just look, you know, uninformative. But of course, this is too quick. That's not, you know, that's, that's anecdote. That's not science. So I think the way to make this point is to look really, you know, at uh, big data and try to see whether with millions of messages posted on the social media, you can try to forecast return and try to forecast fundamentals. And there are papers which have done that. And many of those papers conclude that yes, in fact, there is fundamental information. With those messages, for instance, with uh, the sentiment of those messages on stock tweets, you can forecast short-term returns. And you can even forecast fundamentals, which is even more surprising. You know, you may forecast return just maybe just because because you can forecast noise. That's uh, you 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 learn about noise in the in the market. But that's not that's not that because it seems that some of those messages contain information about fundamentals, uh, and it seems as well that analysts, security analysts, are following those social media to extract information. In fact, in one of the papers presented in the conference today. The authors show that many analyst reports contain references 
to information content in social media, which shows that analysts follow social media. In fact, I have a, a recent paper on this with uh, Olivier Dessin and uh, Laurent Fédard, where we show that um, messages on stock tweets, we look at whether you know, analysts extract information from uh, messages posted on stock tweets. And one exercise we do, that's not the main point of the paper, but one exercise we do is that we run cross-sectional regression of year-on-year um, -year actual sales growth on the ratings, bearish and bullish, basically, uh, in the message. And we show that those ratings indeed contain information up to, uh, up to one year, sales in one, next year sale, for instance, next year sale growth. So there is short-term information that's fundamental. So I think that's an important point for your paper. Uh, no, the question, I think the, the next question is whether this type of information is useful for investment, asset managers. Uh, why do asset managers, uh, why are asset managers willing to buy information about those messages or signals, you know, extracted from those messages? I think there might be many reasons. One reason is that, well, those messages contain information about fundamentals, but in your paper that does not play a role. The more informed guy does not learn from, from the less informed guy about fundamentals. Maybe those messages contain information on noise in the investor signal, which I think is the point of your paper. So it would be interesting to, to develop predictions which, which are specific to this, uh, to this channel, to this mechanism. The third possibility is that those messages contain information about the volume of noise trading, which I think might be the most obvious mechanism that people have in mind, which is by uh, when people start talking about a stock, like GameStop, for instance, on those uh, platforms, that means that uh, maybe you are going to have a lot of noise trading in the stock, and then I should expect reversal in return, for instance. Uh, if you take the GameStop example, I think it's a very interesting example because the example suggests that, well, maybe there is a little bit of both here. In fact, if you look at the evolution of the stock price for GameStop, initially you had this very uh, large, uh, very fast increase in the price, and then a reversal, but the reversal is not, is not complete, even after three or four months after the event. That suggests that maybe, you know, some of the guys who were active on Reddit had, had indeed fundamental information. That was not just noise. Uh, how, how could you distinguish those various cases? I think that's an interesting question to ask, and I think that would be an interesting question to discuss in the, in the paper. Um, if this is information about fundamentals, then I would expect investors using information from social media to trend in the same direction as the sentiment expressed on, on, on platforms. For instance, when uh, the number of messages that are bullish about a stock exceed by a large amount the number of messages that are bearish, I would expect that people who are extracting information from those messages, they buy as investors who express those opinions on, on, on those platforms. So that would generate positive correlation in trade between uh, the two types of investors here, yeah, H and L, if you wish, in your, in your model. If this is the information on noise in investor signal about fundamentals, um, then I think the prediction will be that you will see that those who extract information from social media, they are going to trade against, you know, the sentiment expressed on those media, but ultimately, there will be a positive correlation in, in the order flow of the two types of traders. In fact, this is what happened in your model. Uh, my guess is that in your model, the orders of H and L are positively correlated, but there is one component in the trade of H which is negatively correlated with the trade of, uh, of L because H is trading against the sentiment expressed by, uh, by L. And then the, the third scenario is the case in which H, or those people you know, extracting information from social media, they use, they, 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 they obtain information about the volume of noise trading, but then in this case, the prediction would be that if this is the case, the trade of H and L should clearly be negatively correlated. So by going through the various cases, I think you could, you could try you know, to find predictions that are really specific to your mechanism. And that would be interesting because if people, you know, have information, have data on trades by people like H and trades by people like L, then they can start, you know, distinguishing the various possible type of information. Uh, Here we, you have one good. minute. Yeah, one uh, from social media. Um, 
Yeah, one, one comment. I mean, one comment is about the type of information that people can share. In your model, <coughs> the two guys share information about fundamentals. The two guys have information about, about fundamentals and they communicate this type of information, even though the more informed guy is not really interested in the fundamental information of the, of the, of the less informed guy. Another scenario uh, could be people sharing fundamental and non-fundamental information. That uh, I have an old paper published with Laurence Lescouré in 2003, where we considered exactly this setting in a Kyle, uh, Kyle setup, where basically we had two, uh, two traders, one trader with information about um, the fundamental, and one trader with information about noise trading, you in the model, you in your model. And what we, what we found is that there are parameter values for which both guys would be very happy to share information that will make their expected profit larger for each of them. So in this case, you know, there is bilateral communication and that will even, you know, uh, aggregate, uh, increase their aggregate profit. And so I, maybe, you know, that's not the relevant type of, of case for social media, I don't know. But that's certainly another type of information sharing. And in fact, that may be one advantage of using OTC market and store markets, because in those markets, people may be able to develop this type of uh, arrangement to share fundamental versus non-fundamental information. Okay, and my last suggestion for your paper is that in, your, in the paper, you consider the, the case in which there are multiple insiders. That's an interesting case. I think there is another interesting case, which is the symmetric case where you have multiple edge traders. Because obviously, you know, uh, if we apply the, mod the model to social media platforms, well, on social media, you have many people communicating information. Uh, in this graphic, I show, you know, the number of, the average number of uh, people talking, talking about a specific stock on, on stock tweet. And as you can see, on average, you have about 2,000 2, guys. So that's a lot. So I think, you know, if for the application to social media, it's important to consider the case with multiple, uh, multiple end guys. Uh, but overall, you know, my, my conclusion is this is a super interesting paper. Uh, the result is far from obvious. In fact, when we work on that with Laurence, we avoided, you know, to consider this case to guide with fundamental information because we thought that this would not lead to information sharing. And in fact, you find it does. Uh, the mechanism is interesting. And I find the application to communication on social media very topical and relevant. My, my, yeah, my, my suggestion is to, to develop more this application, essentially. Okay. Thank you, Thierry, for your excellent discussion. So, uh, Li Yan, would you like to briefly respond to uh, Thierry's comments? Uh, thank you very much, Jerry, for, for the great discussion. It would be great if you could share your slides uh, after the conference. Uh, so, so I, I, yeah, all the comments are great, and we try to address and incorporate them in the next uh, version. I, I briefly kind of have some uh, thoughts about uh, some comments. So the first one is uh, the result will disappear when rho is equal to zero. So my gas response kind of rough intuition is because all investors benefit only uh, when she trades on her information. Because it's a, her major benefit is to use each investor to provide a cover, a hide from uh, market makers. Uh, so, so that a market makers um, kind of price schedule is not very responsive to all investors' information. So if rho is equal to zero, our investor has no information at all, so she totally becomes an order trader. So she will not trade, basically, she will lose money. So that's kind of my initial thought. So this is the, her major benefit comes from her information. Uh, she uses H as a kind of a device to uh, protect from market makers. Uh, so the, the second one, uh, I think the, that's a very interesting and, and useful to think about what type of information uh, we can, if we, it would be great if we could make empirical predictions, uh, different predictions based on uh, different types of information. But as you said, um, the, the main channel, it depends on the decomposition. So like the H order and the L order, they have different elements. The overall order flows might be still positively correlated. Only that element driven by the shared information, only that alpha L is negative, but the overall probably is still positive. So we need to think about a way how to decompose each element. So and then if empirically we can identify the element and then we can 
show the negative correlation between elements, but that can be challenging. We need to think more about that. Uh, so the other one, it, it, it would also be, be interesting. We, we, can, we can check your uh, paper in 2003. We will have uh, fundamental information, all the information they will always share with each other in, uh, in some parameter values. That, that's interesting. So that's a we, we kind of, when we were started and I compare with the different channels. The last one is also very uh, nice. Is, um, we, we thought about that uh, uh, if, if people have a different levels of precision, that's uh, more like a communication chain, probably only the, 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 the least um, uh, kind of informed people share information or either they share only to the upper level. And we thought about that one, it's kind of very complicated because our, so that, that is the, also after you get information, you, you share information A to B, how B will deal with this information, will B share this information to C, and it kind of become very complicated. We thought about that one, uh, so we don't have a good way of dealing with that extension, but that's definitely very important and empirically relevant. But overall, I agree with your assessment that we need to take a deeper the applications and empirical predictions. Thank you very much.